ito ko nang ginagawa ko. And do you know that I'm a policy holder for I think more than 10 years? Masa na si Romel? Dito ba siya? Nakaka na yun te, from way back. Hindi ko naman makita yung mga kausap ko. Pwede ba natin patay ng konti itong ilaw direct ng konti? Yan. Wow, you're all the way out there. Can you see me? Yes! Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge two things. First, I want to acknowledge your efforts. I heard you had a banner year last year, 103% success rate. I think you all deserve a round of applause. The next thing I'd like to acknowledge is the efforts of your management for being for putting such an event together. It is no small feat. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic that you're all here. Para paka naman natin ang ating kumpanya ng kumpanya. Finally, on a personal note, I'd like to acknowledge and thank a lot of you here. Um, the, the good thing about doing this, why I like doing these things, talking to a lot of people, is it gives me a chance to thank you. Sa pagsabi ng maraming salamat sa inyong pagsuporta, pag-cheer, pagdasal nyo noong last August sa ating Gilas Pilipinas team. Maraming, maraming salamat sa pagsuporta. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Oh, Ironman! Stephen! Tulog pa ka natin si Stephen, palagi niya akong tinitwit. Okay, Ironman. Pwede, pwede ka wag ka-picture, pero kailangan ng Ironman na costume ka. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things that are really, I think, at the very foundation of the success of your national team, the Gilas Filipinas team. And we're talking about individuals, we're talking about extraordinary people, we're talking about, you know, do you like to use the term, hero? Kaya, nakita ko na costume natin, yung Marvel superhero costume din ako. This is my attempt to become also like the previous speakers. But my thinking is, I was thinking about your theme being extraordinary uh, and being a marvel, being a superhero. And I thought, really, the best way to become an extraordinary individual, almost a hero, is to become the consummate team player. I know you all have your individual work, it's all important, but it only makes sense in the context of what you can contribute to team Manulite. So this afternoon I'm going to talk to you about being tenacious, executionary, accountable, and mentally strong. My team model, you got to be tenacious, you have to be a great in execution, you got to be accountable, and you have to be mentally strong. And I'm going to do that in the, in the uh, person of two of my players. You see, when they formed Gilas, they gave me the very difficult, truly gargantuan task of being the first Philippine team in 40 years to qualify for the World Championships. The last time, thank you, the last time... The last time we qualified for the World Championships was 1974. Can you imagine that? Wala pang pinapanganak sa atin dito ng 1974. Amen! Pagkamanak lang ako dito. That was 40 years ago. So obviously, when you're given an assignment like this, first, the most important element is the selection of players or recruitment. And I submit it is the same in your line of work, in your industry, especially for the leaders, the managers. The most important thing is recruitment and selection of players. Just a couple of thoughts before I, I, I start. My thoughts on building teams and, and selecting players. Number one concept for me, the best players will automatically make the best team. Let me repeat, the best players do not automatically make the best team. Mahirap magsalita sa taas. And people keep asking me that question. Coach, bakit si James Yap, si Mark Aguiwa, Arwin Santos, Alex Cabagmot, very great individual players in their own right. Why aren't they on the national team? My answer is very simple. The best players will automatically make the best team. Okay na yun, patayin na natin to direct. 
Kasi hindi ko nakikita ka usap ko eh. Anyway, yan. Okay. There, I'd like to see the people I talk to. And so, when we built the team on May 1, I said, I'm going to build a team. I'm not going to assemble a collection of superstars. And the number one thing that is important for me is the ability to work hard. And that's why I begin with tenacity. You see, hustle is a skill. In the same manner in basketball, as the ability to shoot, the ability to jump high, the ability to run fast are important skills and talents in sports. Do not underestimate the value of hard work, the value of hustle. Hustle is a skill. You want to be extraordinary. Every single person in this room was born with his or her innate talents, not human inherent talents. What makes you separate from the rest is your ability to work hard. Hustle is a skill. And when I talk about tenacity, I cannot help but talk to you about Mark Pingris. Can I see Mark Pingris? Yes! Sino masawa ni Mark Pingris? Well, something about Mark Pingris maybe you don't know. And this is, let's just keep it among ourselves. It's just a little secret. <laughs> Mark Pingris has no skill. Mark Pingris cannot shoot from the outside. He has very limited ball handling skills, pretty good passer, pretty decent uh, defender. But other than that, he has no obvious skill. He's not gifted physically, he's not all that tall, he's 6'4". So when I had my, my core of players, I had about 8 or 9 players from the 2012 Jones Cup, the tenth pair I picked was Mark Pingris. And people were asking me, Coach, why did you get Mark Pingris? Mark Pingris is 6'4", for the Philippines he's tall. But as a big man, in Asia, he's going to be guarding against 6'9", 6'10 players. And like I told you, Mark Pingris has no outside shooting skill. Unlike Ronald Del Ocampo, who can hit a three-point shot, Mark Pingris cannot shoot to save his life. So sabi nila, ba't mo kinuha si Mark Pingris? Ano gagawin niya? 6 to 4 in Asia is a part. How can you get a big man at 6 to 4? Well, they don't know what I know about Mark Pingris. The ability to work hard. He, is, he has that rare, uncanny ability to just outwork everybody on the floor. And that's special. That makes you special. Ladies and gentlemen here at Manu Life, you're all skilled, you're all trained, you all have the experience. The challenge really is how hard can you work? Because you know what? It doesn't take special talent to work hard. It doesn't matter which school you graduated from. It doesn't matter what, what degree you have. It doesn't matter how much experience you have in this field. Every single person in this room can be a Mark Pingris. And that's why he made the national team. Number one for me, if you're going to make a Chuck Reyes coach team, you best be a hard worker. And that's why tenacity is always my starting point. Very important. Because it is not enough that you have the talent. Stephen said, talent gets you wherever, but it is character that makes you a champion. I, 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 I second his, his thoughts. Talent only gets you invited to the party. Your ability to work hard, your, your character makes you special, makes you extraordinary. Next is a term that I just coined, it's executionary because I wanted it to, to, uh, to fit into the adjective that I'm using. It's an ability to execute. Irrespective of our line of work, irrespective of our job function in this organization, each one of you derives your value from your ability to deliver, to perform, to execute. Nobody is exempt from the mantle of being, in my terms, an executioner. You've got to be tenacious, you've got to be able to execute. And you know, if we had more time, we would go on to my fundamentals of execution. But for this afternoon, suffice it to say, what is required to be great in executing? Number one, you've got to be a great listener. 
you've got to be a great listener. Why? Because you need to know what your coach is telling you. You need to know what your teammates are telling you. You need to understand what the situation calls for. Then you can follow a game plan. Then you can execute. There are so many great individual players in the NBA and in the PBA who are not never going to make my team. Why? Because they can't listen. They don't know how to listen. If you don't know how to listen, how can you follow instructions? Ladies and gentlemen here at Money Life, how important is the ability to listen in your line of work? I would submit it plays a major role in understanding the needs of your clients, in understanding where the market is going, in understanding what products or services to offer. So for me, that's very, very important. If you're going to make my team, you gotta be real, you gotta be willing to work hard, you gotta be a great listener. Another term, another important thing towards being able to execute. Not only do you need to have follow instructions, you know, not only do you need to be a great listener, you also have to possess great humility. Great humility. Because in my teams, my players know how to make room for their teammates. Because in my teams, my players are prepared to sacrifice their individual interests for the good of the team. And it is only people with great humility who are willing to accept that role. In other words, to be a, an executionary player, you have to be prepared to accept your role and play that role to the hill. Sometimes your role is to hit the shot, to, to be a shooter. Sometimes your role is to be a defender. Sometimes your role is to be a passer. Sometimes your role is to be a cheerleader. Sometimes your role is to be takaabot ng tubig, water boy. Whatever it takes for the team to win. That's what I mean when I say that you have to be able to be a master in execution. You gotta be able to follow the instructions of your coach, of your team, and you gotta be able to listen to what your teammates are telling you. Tenacity, executionary, accountability. I don't need to belabor what accountability means to this group. I'm sure you know that. Let me just remind you a couple of things I think you have to be accountable for. Number one, you have to be accountable to being the best team player you can be for my life. Let me repeat that. Extraordinary individuals, great players, they are willing to do what it takes to contribute to the team. You should always ask yourself, what can I do to contribute to my team? To the leaders in the audience, you need to be accountable for developing the next generation of leaders. And to everybody else here, you need to be accountable to developing and growing your skills. And when I talk about accountability, I can't help but be reminded of my 11th pick, so I had 10 players, Mark Fingers was my 10th pick. My 11th pick was a guy by the name of Jimmy Alapang. Kilala niyo si Jimmy Alapang? So people were saying, alam niyo sa Pilipinas, ang daming basketball genius eh, di ba? Lahat genius eh. So sabi na, coach, why do you take Jimmy Alapang? You already have two very good point guards. L.A. Tenorio, Jason Castro. L.A. Tenorio was the MVP of the Jones Cup. Jason Castro was turned out to be the best point guard in Asia. The problem is both L.A. and Jason are vertically challenged. Parehong pandake ko kay, di ba? Si Jason at si L.A. I mean, L.A. will tell me he's 5'9", 5'10". Sabi ko, yeah, right. Pag magandang gising mo, siguro 5'9 ka o 5'10 ka. But they're really just 5'9". So, in Asia, the guards, the other point guards are 6'3", 6'4". And we already have two very good point guards at 5'9", 5'10". And then here I am, for my 11th pick, I pick another point guard who is not only pandakeko, like Jimmy Alapag, but hindi lang siya pandak, a thunders pa. Jimmy Alapag is 36 years old. 
So people were saying me, they're telling me, Coach, what are you smoking? <laughs> you already have two very short point guards, and here you go, you draft another point guard who's shorter than your two small point guards. And to top it all, he's the oldest player on your team, 36 years old. But people don't know what I know about Jimmy Lapan. He's 36 years old. He's the only player on your national team who has an MVP award. Can you imagine that? Not no time in history has there been a national team where there is no most valuable player in the PBA. Think about all the previous MVPs of the PBA. Arwin Santos, Mark Aguila, James Yap, Dalawa, Willie Miller, Dalawa, Kelly Williams, Asik Taulava, Kirby Raimundo, over the past 10 years. Not one of those are in our team. Not one of those most valuable players made it to the national team. Except Jimmy Arapa. So here is the only MVP in our team, the oldest player in our team, which means he has the most he has the most karapatan to be a prima donna. But let me tell you, for a 10 o'clock practice, we have a 9 o'clock call time. Jimmy Arapat is in the gym at 7 o'clock. At 7 p.m., he's already taken his 1,000 shots. He's already run across. He's already run his laps. He's already lifted his weights. So at 9 p.m., he's ready to go. Jimmy Arapat, our only MVP, our team captain, the oldest player in the team, is the first one to arrive, last one to leave practice. Jimmy Rapat never ever takes a break. He's constantly in the gym. He's always practicing. He's maybe the best three-point shooter today in the PBA. And I guarantee you, every break he has, he's in the gym. Even if the team has no practice, by himself, he's there. And I ask, Jimmy, why are you pushing yourself so hard? You gotta take a break. And Jimmy Rapat tells me, Coach, I'm 36 years old. When I retire, I have a lot of free time to rest. In the meantime, I have to keep learning. I have to keep improving. We have to be accountable to improving our skills. We need to be a Jimmy Alapar. Can you imagine if we have, we have what, 2,000 people here? What if we have 2,000 Mark Pinterest and 2,000 Jimmy Alapar? I guarantee you're going to be unbeatable. Jimmy Lapat possesses that one thing that every coach wants in a team. He possesses the characteristics that you all want to have inside of him. He is a leader. He leads by example. He grows. He continues to improve himself. And the last aspect of Jimmy Lapat's personality he is mentally strong. He is mentally strong. Very, very important for my teams, you've got to be mentally tough. You have to discipline your thinking. You have to be able to go into a situation, win or lose, you're giving your best. That leads to mental strength. Why is mental strength important for me? Because the distance from our mind to our heart is sometimes differential. It's very close. And what I find, people who are mentally strong are strong here in their hearts. Sa puso, mga tao who are mentally strong, they never give up. They have a lot of internal fortitude. You cannot put them down. It's hard to beat them. So Mark Pingris and Jimmy Lopat are just two examples of the kind of players on my team. And it gives you an idea of the kind of character and the values that we treasure in Guinness. And so we eventually got the 12-man lineup together. We were given two months to practice. Imagine that, two months to practice for a 40-year journey, for the biggest challenge in 40 years. But we came out, we worked hard. Like I told you, we have players who are tenacious, they're accountable to each other, they're mentally strong. August 1 comes around, we finally start the FIBA Asia. We have two twins, and on the third game, we lost to Chinese Taipei. And again, people were saying, wow, patay na tayo, we have no chance. Chinese Taipei lang natalo na tayo. But remember what I said, we're mentally tough. We're tenacious, we never give up. 
So after the cross, we just went on a great run. We played some unbelievable basketball. Really, nobody could touch us. Until we come to that fateful final four game semi-final matchup against Korea. And remember, to qualify for the World Championships, you need to be in the top three. So in the final four matchup, in the semi-finals, if we win one game, we automatically enter the finals, automatic ticket to the World Championships in Spain. The problem is, in the semi-finals, we are faced against Korea. And we haven't beaten Korea in the last 20 or so years. Hindi ko alam ano nangyari nung dumami yung mga Koreano dito sa Pilipinas. I think they did something to our water or whatever. We just couldn't beat Korea. Every important knockout match, Philippines versus Korea, we lost in whatever. Missed three throws, a second three-point shot. But I built this team for Korea. I built Pinas really for Korea. And so we played very, very well. Started the game well, controlling the first half, and then disaster strikes. In our team of all mga pandakekoks, we have one tall guy, Marcus Dautin, and he goes down with an injury. So we lose Marcus Dautin in the first half, he doesn't play at all in the second half. But what would I say about our team? We are tenacious. We never give up. We keep fighting until the last three minutes of the fourth quarter. And can we have the video up, please? Just pause the video. Yeah, just pause it there. So we are now three minutes left. We're down two points to Korea, and we have to take out this guy, Jason Castro. You see this? He's holding his lip. He got a very bad gash, six stitches on his lower lip. Jason Castro at this point was only our best player. He had 17 points at this time. So think about it for a minute. Here we are in the biggest game of our lives. And we don't have our two best players. No Marcus Dalton, no Jason Castro. Think about that for a minute. But remember, our team, we never give up. We're tenacious, we keep fighting. Let's play the video, please. on how to execute. Here is our game plan. On offense, we will not attack the defense's best defender. The other team's best defender is this guy, number six. Nakikita niyo ba yung red dot here? Can you see it? This guy is the team's best, the Korea's best defender. We are not going to attack him. So everybody else can go and score except that guy. Now we need to execute. Okay, and it's very, very important to win the ball game. Play, please. Oh, we need some shooters now on the floor. Just over three minutes remaining. Katawala ka, kailangan na. Abulin dito ng hilas. Jimmy stopped on his tracks. Game over back to Alpag. Big miss bleeding for that leather. Jimmy launches it. Now, on defense, on defense, our game plan is very simple. This guy, on defense, we don't want their best scorer to touch the ball. Can you get the video up, please? Yes, no. No, let Just over three minutes remaining. Okay, okay. Jimmy stopped on his tracks. Gave over back to the puck. Big miss bleeding for that leather. Jimmy launches it.
Tapos, huwag nyo nalagay itong ilaw. Hindi na ako importante. It's just the audio video. Shot that light. Okay. On defense, our game plan is this guy by this time has 27 points. So the defensive game plan is don't let him touch the ball. So that's Dave Norwood guarding him. He's doing all he can to... Uh, No problem, huh? Direct? We need some shooters. It's going to go back to the video. It's hard to explain. It's going to be the time. It's going to be the time. Thank you.